So this is the story of a motorcycle that I've had hidden inside my shop that no one knows about. The story starts about eight months ago when I bought this Harley Davidson military bike and learned that Harley did not obtain the contract for the military. They were beat by a tiny company who retrofitted one of the most durable motorcycles on the planet to run on diesel and JP8. Now rumor has it only a few hundred were ever made. And just so happens that six weeks later, I find myself in a beating war on GovDeals.com for two of them. In the end, I only had the stomach to buy just one and it cost me the price of three brand new KLRs or 8,000 Choco Tacos. So they, they discontinued the Choco Taco. They're, they're all gone. That's what you think, Dan. Oh, Sean, you got a package. It's here. The last box. Choco Tacos. The last box. I forget the Choco Taco. Get back to the bike and here it is. Motorcycle, diesel, guy stuff. And we're gonna figure out whether it was worth the high price tag that I paid, which although considering what the military probably paid for it, I probably got a good deal on it. We're also hopefully gonna find out whether it actually even works because I've never started it. And we're gonna see if this thing is, a, is as capable as they thought it was. This week, I'll buy some beards. <laughs> All right, so this is the legendary KLR diesel. It's, I've read about them, but it's my first time really getting into it. And they made this thing for the Marine Corps. And it was interesting about it was Harley spent a lot of time working on that MT, uh, MT500. They spent a lot of time and energy trying to build this, trying to get the military contract. And then right before it seemed like they were gonna get it, the military was like, it's gotta run on JP8, it's gotta run on diesel fuel. And the reason they did that is because the military has so much going on and moving, it doesn't make any sense them to have multiple different fuels they have to move. They have one fuel truck that runs everything, airplanes, aircraft carriers, motorcycles, tanks, Oshkoshes, whatever type, whatever they're running in the military these days. So it all has to run on JP8. And a small company that owned by a guy named Fred Hayes, who specialized in diesel motorcycles. That's what HDT is. Hayes Diversified Technologies made this bike. And what they did was, if you look at the other side, it's still the, uh, the casing for the, uh, for the KLR. The frame, most of this thing is all KLR. This is an HRB's uh, like five or five and a half gallon tank. It's ginormous. And the other side of the crankcase is still from the, still from the KLR, but they, they retrofitted and built in a diesel engine inside of it. They made two different displacements, a 584cc and a 611cc. I don't even know which one this actually is. And if you're wondering, it's just diesel. It's not a turbo diesel. It should be a turbo diesel, though. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. We're pretty 50-50 on the turbo thing. Sometimes it works out well. Sometimes it doesn't work out very well for us. So I don't really know that much about the history of this specific bike. We bought it from a Maryland police department. I don't know why they had it, although it does say, it, just, it says right here, USMC. So I assume that at some point in time, it may have been Af in Afghanistan. It may have, the Marines had it at some point in time. It's really hard to find and track down information about that stuff, though. So before we find out if it's actually gonna start, which we don't, we don't really know, it's gonna start. This motorcycle has something on here that I've never seen on any motorcycle ever, and I wanna show it to you guys. It took us a while to figure out what this thing is. It looks like it's got a little lens down here, and after uh, posting about it on my uh, text group, apparently it, it's connected to this. Lights off blackout. So apparently what this works is, you get the lights when you're doing normal light stuff and you wanna see lights, but you do blackout when you don't want anyone to see you too far away, but you still need, you still need the people around you to see you. So it also has another light system back here. Check that out. It's got other lights back here. If we turn the key on, and it's on black, out. They're very dim, but if it's if it's really dark out, you can still see that, so no one's gonna run into the back of you. And it makes sense, you know, they gotta be stealthy and doing their military stuff. It's funny though that they left them on there and they didn't take them off. I imagine that might be expensive. But let's uh let's get Craig in here and see if we can get this thing to fire up. Hey Craig! Before we fire this thing up, check up here. So, so this is part of the game. How do you say it, Craig? Acer bees? Acer bees. A churbies. A churbies. Six gallon. Giant fuel tank. Got this little coolant, coolant reservoir that sits on top of here. Is that normal on the uh, a churbies? No, that would be something special. And then this part right here, this casing right here, other than the gearbox, is the only piece that's actually originally from a 650. And it makes sense. I mean, you know, why not use the same uh, casing? Was this the um, separator, fuel, fuel filter? Yeah, fuel filter. If I undo that, we'll water leak out of it mm, maybe looks like fuel fuel yeah that's good that's good news it's supposed to have like a 96 mile per gallon range about a hundred miles per gallon on the fuel range which was one of the qualifications that the military made for for these motorcycles was you have to be, you have to be able to put blackout lights on them no problem you have to run on jp8 no problem it also has to do at least 400 miles per tank and this thing a six gallon tank let's do 600 miles that's crazy that's almost here to uh to georgia do like a woo, 
Ooh, that's a long trip. Fred Hayes has some of the records for the um, most miles per gallon on a uh, diesel motorcycle. It's like, oh, it's, like it's, it's over 200 or something crazy. What? I'll check it and out. This it's like 357 miles on it. This is a decompression, and we should bleed bleed the fuel line, bleed the fuel system. Now? Yeah. Well, how do you do that? Um, it's going to be a bleed up front here somewhere. You want to turn it over a little bit and see if you get any air bubbles out of there? Oh no. You break it? That's not good. Yeah, it's broke. Oh. So it doesn't like it when you touch it. Don't touch Don't it. Don't touch it. Okay, now, yeah, look at that. It's just crumbling apart. It's very sensitive for a military bike. Oh, dude, those army guys, so sensitive. Look at the fuel. It's just falling apart. Uh, so we need to find some fuel on there. We have fuel line? So before we can start the bike, we need to prime the fuel system to get all the air out of the fuel lines. And the first and only fuel line that we actually touched it disintegrated and fell apart. So this is starting out pretty well. So we're gonna replace that broken fuel line and hopefully that's the only problem we have with this entire project. The best thing about what we do is we have hundreds of thousands, if not over a million people who like motorcycles, who watch this stuff, who sometimes have different, have secret intel and stuff that we don't know about. This might be someone's motorcycle watching the channel. I will also be interested in see what the Maryland Police Department was doing with the with the bike. They never really made it their own because I mean they, they 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 peeled off the USMC stickers, but other than that, they didn't really they didn't, they didn't even drive it. You know? Can I crank it? Oh, you got new fuel on it? I yeah, I threw a piece on there. I want to see if it leaks. Wait, does it leak? No. Hold on. Let me let me let me uh let me get these seats the seat off. I want to I don't want to kill our battery. There we it go. Is. Craig, where do you think this mud came from? Kazakhstan. I think it came from Chadistan. It's not even a country, Dan. We all know that. Shots fired! There we go. Are right, we doing this? Should I get the instruct starting instructions? Turn the ignition switch to on, open the fuel bleed valve in front of the injection pump, half turn, engage the compression release lever, push the start button and watch for air bubbles in the line from the fuel bleed valve to the fuel tank. Half turn. Do not operate the starter consistently for more than five seconds or the starter will overheat and the world will explode. <laughs> the battery power will drop temporarily. Wait 15 seconds between operation and the starter. Now normally we'd be asking the question, fuel, spark, compression, timing. Well, we don't have spark. I mean, there's, there's a diesel, there's no spark. It's all <laughs> compression. It's all fuel and compression. And maybe we're realizing why they uh, don't still use these in the Marine Corps. So my original plan was to buy two of these, and then me and Craig would both have one, and we could take them on crazy adventures and, and really see what these things can do take them on big hill climbs and through water. And I wanted to see what a diesel bike can do. The problem was once the auction came up, it was at 6,000 and then it was a 7,000 and then 8,000 and then 9,000, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then it went all the way up to $20,000, which would make this the second most expensive diesel KLR ever that I've ever heard of. The most expensive diesel KLR was the second bike. And that did like $1,000 more, maybe 500 bucks more. And I'm pretty sure that the listing said that this one ran, that it ran, that it ran pretty good. And we bought it from a police department. So, I mean, it's got, it's got to run. It's got to run. Oh, what's that thing? Is that a primer? Mm -hmm. I just want a squish button. Found the lever. Not sure what it's doing. Huh. Did you move it? I moved it. All right, let's try to, maybe that's what those uh, police guys couldn't figure out. Go ahead. It's gonna stay down here. Was that you giving it throttle? That's me moving the compression to decode. Oh, okay. So that's. Which way did you move it? That way? To, this that... way, and it started chugging a little bit. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. I think that's good. Let's make it a new, new sound. And if you know anything about me and Craig, we're <laughs> always looking for that new sound. That's right. right. Starter's not hot yet. It's just starting to get warm. The decompression right yeah, there? Yeah, I believe so. Yep. I don't really understand what the point of a decompression switch on a diesel is. Do you know the answer? Um, I don't. Where's that? Solenoid's getting hot. Ooh, solenoid. 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 Sillynoid? Sillynoid. That's silly, Dan. Part of me wonders if we should get the tank off 
and kind of see where's what in underneath here. Yeah. You gotta admit though, there's nothing manlier than working on your diesel motor, your diesel military motorcycle. I feel like all we're missing are some AR-15s and bikinis. I stopped wearing a bikini. I got a, I got a big burn on my leg right here and it's Stick something in there. So we open it Look at this motorcycle bleeds green. This thing's Marine Corps through and through. <laughs> So just to help you guys understand how the fuel system works on a diesel, Craig's gonna explain how the fuel travels. So out of the tank, in this hose, in through the filter separator, back out, comes into this hose, fuel pump, from the fuel pump it runs. That's a mechanical fuel pump? Yes. And then into this, out this line, in here, out here to a banjo bolt. This is the fuel, this is the injection pump. So this is the fuel pump. So fuel's coming in, into here, goes into the injection pump. The injection pump is what's doing your, your injector timing and building the pressure. Comes up this fuel line into the injector, and then this is your return line. So we don't know if we're getting fuel up so, here. So, yep, so right now we are not getting- or up there. Fuel, we're not getting fuel out of the injector pump. That might be why. So if we sprayed it, ether inside there, it would probably start, but if the system needed to be primed, that could potentially suck it up and get it get it going. Potentially, yeah. Maybe. So what's going on is we're tracing the fuel throughout the system to try to see where uh, we're not getting fuel because it seems like we're not getting fuel to the engine. While Craig works on that, I'm gonna pop this thing off. Is this a filter? What is this? This is an oil filter. I'm gonna turn this over a little bit. Yo, oh wait, what do you have off? Uh, this. I'm gonna put it back on. I don't know what that is. As of now, we still have not heard this bike run, nor can we confirm that the bike even runs, which means that it could still have some pretty major issues, such as low compression or possibly no compression, which would make this bike pretty much impossible to fix due to the lack of parts that are available for it. But I have an idea that should bring us a little bit more clarity. You wanna see if it'll pop off with uh, starting fluid? Try it. Uh, starting fluid's in on the table. So we still haven't figured out the fuel issue. We can eliminate some some issues, not the fuel issue, but we can eliminate something to, if we know the engine actually runs. We want to hear what this thing sounds like. I want to hear that. I want to hear what a diesel motorcycle sounds like. So it's never recommended. It's not the best idea. If you're ever looking at buying a diesel vehicle and they have to start it with ether, do not buy it. That means it's got some problems. Probably a lot of blow by. But to get yourself out of the woods, All right, you ready? <laughs> Careful, don't let it run away. Well, we know what it sounds like. It sounds pretty cool. And we've confirmed, one, it's got enough compression to run. Two, it sounds amazing. We just gotta figure out this fuel issue. Okay, when you pulled what, when you pulled this, what was in here? Uh, I didn't know. Now what is that thing? Honey, <laughs> Frank, you know what you're looking at? <laughs> yeah. And then we got our first big break, literally. Oh. It doesn't look good. No, oh. it looks kind of worn out on the one side. It does, doesn't it? It doesn't look straight anymore. <sighs> that should be spinning the pump. Maybe Just this was yeah. metal pieces. Oh, both sides. Look at that. Look at that. Look how shiny that is. Mm. Oh, isn't that bad? Yeah. Metal shavings. Well, you see right here? That's all ground down, and this is all ground down. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. We have a KLR diesel for sale. Only ridden once. Oh. What did you discover, Craig? I think this pin and this pin are broke. Are like shaved off? Are shaved off because there's no reason, there's no reason to have that machined in there. Wait, are you saying that's the other end of the pin? Yep. So Craig thinks that these pins, right, oh yeah, that looks pretty broken. You know what I mean, you see it. Craig thinks that these pins right here are the other side of those pieces right there. And the pins is what allows the motor to move the injector pump to send the fuel to the injectors. Or at least that's what our current best guess is. So broken pins equals no diesel. No diesel equals no fun. I pulled that cover off first. I was like, well, let's see what's in here. I thought it was the starter. I thought it was gonna be sand in there. Little did I know that was the, uh, the problem. Metal sand. So... 
then I get an idea. And it's either a great idea or an awful idea. We're not sure yet. The plan is maybe I can use this drill to turn the injector pump fast enough to get the system full of diesel and possibly, just maybe, we can get the bike running that way. Go ahead, you can see it moving here, coming out there. Yeah, okay, so that's that's all good. You ready? Yep. Oh. Oh, it's pumping. Yep. It's not moving. We're, it's not moving it though. Like, that's not moving. It's just gonna go in like this. Barely used KLR diesel for sale. It needs a couple parts. Runs great. Old Marine rode at the church on Sundays. Oh, there we go. I'm not seeing any movement here. Nothing. Why was it working sometimes and not other times? You don't need it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. So at this point, you might be kind of getting a little bit concerned, kind of like how I am. But I rest assured, we have never not gotten a motorcycle to run. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. We have never given up on a motorcycle. When you're not really fine. And we always end on a high note. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. The, the Pulse Auto Cycle does not count because I, I hate that thing. I hate it because we never got it running, but it doesn't count. All right, so when Craig's out there doing stuff with blow torches, I got a different strategy. There's no one really knows much about these bikes. Apparently, they only made 214 of them. It is the, the closest thing to a number that I've seen. And the other problem is um, Hayes Diversified Technologies is out of business. Actually, someone even said that the, that the domain is available for sale. So we can't get a hold of anyone there. I did, however, find someone on a forum, avdrider.com, who seems to know a lot about these bikes, has had a bunch of them, I think like 12 of them in the past couple of years. I did the last thing I would ever thought I would do, and I joined that forum. And now I'm trying to get a hold of this guy. I don't know how to use forums, but hopefully this guy has some information for us. So we found out that this guy has multiple parts bikes up until as of last year. Here we go. You can reply to this message if you want. Make sure you insult him and his mom <clears throat> in the message. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's that's like forum <laughs> etiquette right there. Hello, sir. I just got a diesel KLR on Gov Deals. And we're having some issues. It looks like you're the expert on these bikes. I'd love to get you, you on the phone. Uh, this is from my YouTube channel, Bikes and Beards, and would really appreciate your help. I, I know, I know, I know somehow I just, I, somehow with this nice, kind message, I've offended every single person in this forum, and I broke all forum rules and etiquette. I'm aware of that. But in normal life, this would be a nice message. Post reply. We did it. Uh, you're a noob. That's your title on the forum. Dang it. Because you just started, so you're a noob. So well, we're making headway on this forum, connect, contacting to a guy who might have the parts we need and the information we need. Let's go see what's going on with Craig. All right, what's going on, Craig? Well, I got this off. This holds this cup onto the injector shaft, the injection pump shaft. So that's off now, but I need a puller so I can pull this off. It's on a tapered shaft. I need to be able to pull that off. All right, so let's go get a puller, see what happens with this guy on the forum. So one of the problems is that we are working on a motorcycle that basically doesn't exist, and no one knows anything about him. So now I'm kind of second-guessing whether I missed something on the original listing that may have said, like, bad motor or something obvious. I, I've been known to do stuff like that, so it's possible that in my haste, I missed something out. So I tracked down the listing, and this is what it said. Has been sitting for a year, was running great, and started every time. Now, clearly, we know, I mean, it was broken when we got it, because we didn't break it. So the only way that, this, that, that, that both things are true is that the last time they ran it, it broke, and then they never started it again. I guess that could, I guess that could be what happened, but I'm pretty sure we're still gonna get this thing running. So when we get those little nubs in those little holes so that it's locked up, and then we put the cap on, it, it doesn't, the cap doesn't hold this down far enough to keep those little nubs in their little nub holes. So here's what I did. I just stuck some bolts in there. <laughs> And uh, now, now it's now it's locked up. All right, before before you comment, we know this is stupid. <laughs> but you know what? What are you supposed to do? This is an awful idea. We have that in. That should spin. Let's see if we get fuel. This isn't working. What's the beef, Craig? I don't know. But nothing we do is working. Do we go back to running ether? Will ether get it started? Try it. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
And just when it seemed like we were gonna get this thing running, maybe, with our last ditch effort, the starter pinion stopped connecting to the engine. So either the starter failed or something worse. <laughs> Much worse. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. I always wanted one of these bikes. I'm taking it back now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Dan, I said no cliffhangers. What's up? Well, we, we have to do a cliffhanger. You didn't get the bike running yet. But we can't. We can't do cliffhangers. What, we, no, we, no, people don't like it. We just did one. It was fine. They hated it. They revolted. They were. They did. Yeah. No more cliffhangers. We need this video to come out for the KLR diesel people to fix this bike because we can't do it on our own. You guys never rode the bike. We could just do it in Photoshop. Just ed edit it in there. Make it look like we Photoshop. You don't know what you're talking about. Photoshop? We'll just, we'll just green screen, all right? Yeah, we can't do another cliffhanger. And just people are gonna freak out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're fired. We need a new editor. In a last minute effort, Sean figured out how to fix the bike using bubble gum and a Tic Tac. And took the diesel bike on an amazing adventure that really happened. But for real, send help. We need help getting this bike running. I got some big ideas for it. Here, let's... Uh...